All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an exciting review today as long as this beautiful Vancouver April weather holds up. Today we get to test out the Babala Origin, the new Rafa racket. It's been teased for the last couple months, but now it's here. You get to try it out. Exciting stuff. Whoa, hold on a second there, Luca. See, I was a bit confused about the name, but now I'm not. The only racket in the new Rafa lineup that's called the Origin is the one that has Rafael Nadal's actual spec. The racket I'm holding in that little clip is called the 2023 Babolat Pure Aero Rafa. And by the way, it started raining 15 minutes later. Wow, that means the 2023 Pure Aero had a very short lifespan. Well, not quite. That racket is still very much in line, in stock, and absolutely fantastic, by the way. Check out our review at racketsandrunners.ca. So I'm just here editing this video, and I realized I haven't asked for likes or subscriptions yet, so I'm gonna do that now. Please like and subscribe, and hopefully you enjoy. Before I tell you exactly about the racket that I'm holding, let me tell you a little bit about the origin. The origin is basically Babolat's RF97. Yes, finally another brand capitalizing off the fact they have a tennis and marketing goat and releasing his actual spec. Over to you, Head. Obviously, throughout his career, there have been plenty of discussions about Rafael Nadal's actual spec, but here's what we know for a fact about the origin. It's molded after the original, Aero Pro Drive and has a 100 square inch head size and 16 by 19 string pattern. Beyond that though, it is heavily, heavily customized. Heavily being the keyword. It'll weigh somewhere between 315 and 320 grams unstrung. Wait, that's not that heavy. It will also have a 370 ish swing weight. That's heavy. To get to that quite frankly insane swing weight, the racket's gonna have a 330 millimeter balance, which might not technically be head heavy, but in today's day and age, it might as well be. But enough about the origin, because we don't have one and we're not reviewing that today. What is the Rafa, and where does it fall in the now very confusing Babolat Pure Aero lineup? The Babolat Pure Aero Rafa is to the origin, what the Pro Staff 97 is to the RF 97. That's to say, a more user-friendly version of the Pro Player spec. The Rafa only weighs 290 grams which might seem light, but the reason for that low static weight is because Babolat has decided to give it the same balance and weight distribution as the Origin. It also has a 330 millimeter balance and swung at 332 swung with a 17 gauge poly. 332 swing weight for a 290 gram racket is off the charts high. And while that low static weight might make it seem like an intermediate or a team racket, I can guarantee you that it isn't. It might not be as tough to swing as the Origin, but it's definitely definitely not going to be easy. Also, moving forward, I'll be calling this one the Rafa and the heavier one the Origin. The other major difference between the Origin and the Rafa is in string bed density. Yes, they are both 16 by 19s, but the Origin and Babolat Pure Aero 2023 only have one main skip, like the original Aero Pro Drive, whereas the Rafa has two. That makes for a string bed that is noticeably more open than the one on the Origin and Standard Aero and brings it much closer to the 2019 Aero that it replaces. Now, before we move on to how this racket actually plays, I wanted to do a quick breakdown of the now very confusing Aero line from heaviest to lightest, at least everything before the team rackets. So first off, you've got the Origin, which is the heaviest, the most demanding, and has Rafael Nadal's actual spec. That one should come in at around 317 grams. Then you've got the Babolat Pure Aero 98, which weighs 305 grams and is basically just a 98 square inch version of the standard Pure Aero 2023, which is the standard Aero, the inline current kind of most technologically advanced version of the Aero 100, which weighs 300 grams. And finally, you've got the Rafa, which is 290 grams and is basically just a toned down version of the Origin. But let's talk about how this racket actually plays, because it is quite special. I first strung it up with Babala RPM Rough at 53 pounds, and then I tested it with RPM Blast at 56 pounds. It's actually pretty wild. Every time I hit with a member of the Aero line, I just can't believe how quick it is through the air. When you swing it parallel to the ground, the way an Aero should be swung, it's so much faster than everything else out there on the market. 20 years ago, Babolat struck gold with this Aero beam design, and it's definitely lasted the test of time. You know, it's so good that I wonder if some Babolat engineers might have colluded with some Airbus engineers to design it. How far are Toulouse and Lyon anyway? Hmm. I might be onto something. 
Anyways, the major difference between the Rafa and other pure arrows is that there's so much weight concentrated in the hoop that the racket is close to being head heavy. That makes it feel a little bit more like a hammer than other arrows and definitely gives it a slightly more sluggish feel. Don't get me wrong, it's still quick thanks to that aerodynamic beam, but it's not as quick as other rackets with the arrow name. It's a little bit slower to bring through contact and definitely tougher to maneuver around the court. It always takes me a bit more time to get used to the swing pattern of an arrow, but this one was particularly different and definitely took me a bit more time than usual. Rackets just aren't really balanced this way anymore. That begs the question then, why did Babolat decide to go in this direction? Well, the answer is quite simple. With this balance and swing to static weight ratio, they are basically trying to mimic the swing feel of the origin just in a more toned down package. Think about it this way. 290 grams is light for the average competitive tennis player just like how 317 grams is light for the average professional player. The relative swing weights, though, are not light. Us mere mortals just don't have the same strength, timing, or precision as Nadal. And while it might be a cool experience to try and master the origin, it actually makes sense for our relatively weaker games to swing a relatively lighter racket. It's actually kind of genius what Babolat has done here. Think of this as a sort of Rafa's racket for dummies. We might not be dummies, but compared to his skill level, we kind of are. Look, I'm not gonna lie, it definitely took me a while to get used to this racket swing pattern, but once I did, I came to really appreciate the fact that I was swinging a racket with similar weight distribution to what Nadal actually uses, and it actually taught me a few things. We've all seen how Nadal hits 90% of his forehands, especially when the points get tight and he can't afford to miss, he lassos the follow through over his head instead of following through over his shoulder. The more I played with this, the more I started to want to naturally do the same, and I kind of understand how the rackets waited to optimize that stroke style. When you've got this much weight concentrated in the hoop, it's actually pretty hard to complete a full classic follow through. Sure, when you do, that added weight helps produce a ton of everything, mainly power and spin, but it also introduces a very tight margin for error. You have less control over the racket's face, which basically means the slightest inconsistency in your swing can make the ball go pretty much anywhere. This much weight concentrated in the hoop basically makes for a racket that's extremely rewarding, but also very risky. In steps the lasso technique. Nadal basically uses it to manage risk. He brushes up more on the ball, which helps produce more spin and therefore more margin for error. But when you combine that technique with the amount of weight concentrated in the hoop, it makes for a ball that has so much spin. Honestly, it's one of the most spin-friendly rackets I've ever used. By the end of my playtest, I don't even use that much spin, but the ball looked like one of those hairless chihuahuas it was losing so much felt. You've got all that weight in the hoop, the arrow modular beam, and on top of that, the Rafa maintains the more open 2019 arrow's string bed density. It's more spin friendly than the 2023 arrow, more spin friendly than the arrow 98, and honestly, probably more spin friendly than the origin will be. One very quick thing though, because this is modeled after the Aero Pro Drive, there are no more spin grommets like there were on the previous version. Now that does make for slightly less string movement, but honestly, because of that weight distribution, I think this is definitely more spin friendly than the previous version. Now earlier, I mentioned that this weight distribution makes for an element of risk, but also makes it a lot more rewarding. When you go for the killer shot with this racket, you better make clean contact, but when you do, the Aero Rafa is insanely rewarding. It was always going to be powerful with its low static weight, high swing weight, and stiff 70 RA unstrung, but this thing really is a powerhouse. Also, because this string bed is so open, it has a really high launch angle. You get a ton of purchase on the ball, and honestly, it's a lot more powerful than the standard 2023 arrow. Look, if you want put away power, the Rafa has it in spades. When everything comes together for that style of shot, go for it, but you better be ready to control it. If you're looking for pinpoint directional control, this just isn't the racket for you. All those things that make it so great at generating a ton of spin and a ton of power also make it lack a bit in classic control. When I had it strung up at 53 pounds, I was definitely struggling with it being a little bit too launchy on flat shots. So I restrung it at 56 and that definitely tightened everything up, made the sweet spot a little bit smaller, but it was still a little bit wild and that's definitely not the racket's forte. Also, because there is so little weight concentrated in the handle, the racket is not exactly stable. Especially at the net and on put away shots, the racket had a tendency to flutter a little bit even after I put a leather grip on to try to boost that stability. But you gotta keep in mind, control doesn't only come from a dense string bed and soft flex. Nowadays, players control their shots with spin, and this racket is modeled after one of the major reasons why that became a thing, 
the Aero Pro Drive. That racket was basically the first to require spin to optimize its control, and it's been the same story on every pure Aero since, and it's part of why that racket revolutionized the game of tennis. As long as you know that you gotta play with spin to control this thing, you'll be fine. I'm not gonna lie, I get a little annoyed when Head and Wilson purists in particular get snobby about the feel of Babolat rackets. Claiming that Babolat rackets feel bad is a simplistic generalization because they're literally just not all molded the same. I mean, we're talking about the company that produces the best natural gut in the world. If that's not great feel, I don't know what is. Sorry, that was a little aggressive. If there is one culprit to blame for Babolats being labeled like this, it might be the pure arrow line. The rackets historically not always had fantastic feel. It's always been stiff and up until the 2023 arrow there were some pretty intrusive dampening technologies that took away from what you would consider good feel. Now because the Rafa is modeled after the Aero Pro Drive it doesn't really have any of that dampening tech but that doesn't exactly mean that the feel is great. I found it to feel very raw and a little bit hollow and the sweet spot was really big. It really does have that OG Babolat tweener vibe. Some people will love it and some really don't. There is one thing I will say about the feel though. No other line of rackets on the market rewards you with such positive feedback when you hit a proper topspin, super spinny ground stroke. The racket is so fast through the air and there's so much string movement that it does reward you with this beautiful kind of snapping sensation when the ball does leave the string bed. Look, it's a stiff racket with little to no dampening technology. So is it uncomfortable? Not necessarily, but it's definitely not a clash. Give yourself a head start here. Don't go stringing it with 4G at 60 pounds. Try something maybe a little slicker, a little softer at a lower tension, and I don't think you will have any issues. Here's what I will say. I don't usually have problems with this comfort, but when I strung it up at 56 pounds with RPM blast to try to control that higher launch, I could definitely feel it in my elbow after a two hour session. So who's this racket for? Well, first and foremost, it'll be awesome for you Rafa fans that wanna try something with a similar weight distribution, balance, and feel to what Nadal actually uses. It's also gonna be great for those players that love the 2019 Pure Aero and want a similar spin experience. If you do have a problem with the balance, add 10 to 15 grams to the handle, and that should bring the swing pattern closer to that version. Of course, any player who likes to play with a ton of spin will love this racket, and it's a great experience altogether. It has the OG spin racket, it in its DNA, it's just a slightly more modern version of that. I would only avoid this thing if you really are a flat hitter or a serve and volley specialist because this racket's best properties really don't complement that style of play. Honestly, I'm so happy Babolat finally decided to release a Rafa specific lineup and I really hope this racket does as well for them as the RF has done for Wilson. This really is a special frame and it provides a truly unique experience. I definitely hope to demo the origin but before that, this is more than enough. The Rafa will be available very soon for demo or for purchase in store or at racketsandrunners.ca.